Good afternoon, everyone. It's with great pleasure I'm here today. I want to first of all thank our partners in this state of the city, the Port of Stockton for putting us up in such grand quarters and for making this event as special as it is every year. Also the Stockton Chamber of Commerce for always being that partner to have that third leg on, on our activities. We so appreciate the work of the Chamber of Commerce in being the real cheerleaders for the city of Stockton. At this time, I'd like to introduce the team that I serve with on the City Council, because without a team approach, we wouldn't be accomplishing anything during these very difficult times. So I'd like my fellow council members to please stand up, all at once, if you would. I'd like to recognize the Vice Mayor, Kathy Miller, Council Member Susan Eggman, Council Member Paul Canapa, Council Member Diana Lowry, Council Mem Member Albert Holman, and Council Member Dale Fritchen. This is the team, ladies and gentlemen. These are, the, once again, the brave souls who are hanging in there fighting for you each and every day that they serve as elected officials in these very difficult times. Now, here we are, the city of Stockton, in its fourth year of the Great Recession. And Stockton is ground zero in suffering the effects of this economic tsunami that has devastated cities throughout California and the nation. All eyes are on Stockton right now and how we deal with a fiscal crisis that will make or break our future. But let's look carefully at the reality realities of the situation and where we really are as a city, because it's not all bad news. Everything always has, a, you know, a silver lining to it. And there are many silver linings in our city. But let's look at how we got to where we are today, because it's important that we learn the lessons of the past and don't repeat them in the future. So how did we get here? There's lots of reasons why Stockton is in the financial situation it is today, and I'll just kind of name them for you without going into great detail. There's plenty of them to go around. Number one, we have unsustainable retiree health benefits that are choking us now and in the future to the tune of $417 million. We have large bond debt to the tune of 319 million. Those bonds built infrastructure projects such as uh, community centers, firehouses, uh, the ballpark, the arena, did a lot of public projects in our community when money was flowing freely, when the economy was booming. Today we're paying on that debt. We have generous or had generous labor contracts where our employees were, were paid good wages, outstanding benefits, a lot of good uh, contracts that they enjoyed. We have had state raids on city finances. Believe me, the state is a major culprit in our economic situation. They took our vehicle license fees over the years, several times, to the tune of millions of dollars. And then the final nail in the coffin was when they eliminated our redevelopment agency, when they basically took away another tool for economic development in our community, a tool that transformed our waterfront and our downtown. They took it away from us and now there are millions in debt related to that redevelopment agency that we're still working through. Of course, there were poor fiscal management practices. There were mistakes made over the years. You know, business, nobody, may, nobody is perfect, and not everyone does everything exactly uh, the way it should be or the way the, it's supposed to be without either intentionally or unintentionally, but mistakes were made in how we dealt with our finances. 
Probably just as important, the city of Stockton never set aside a rainy day fund. They never had reserves that could take us through a difficult economic time like this. And as business people, we all know that you've got to have money in a sock somewhere. You've got to make sure you've got that backup plan because we all know business and the economy are cyclical. We all know about the ups and downs. We all know that we always have to keep an eye on what the future may bring and it may not be as rosy as we would like. Finally, the two real nails in the coffin were the housing market collapse. When in 2007 we were building 3,000 homes in this community, last year it was 150. That was a huge economic slap to our, our basic finances in the city, made a huge difference. And of course, the Valley Recession came in and again hammered us significantly. As part of the Central Valley, we know our economies always struggle with high unemployment. We always struggle with these issues related to the nature of our economy here. None of us wanted to be one of the top cities in terms of foreclosures in the nation, but we've been that way for a number of years. And we're hoping, we're hoping that we move out of that top 10 very soon. So what's the current situation? That's what's happened to us. That's been what we're dealing with. Well, the current situation is we're looking at the next year's budget, the 2012-13 budget. And it's been reported by our city manager, Bob Dice, that we have a $26 million deficit. In other words, another hole in this year's budget. And the sad thing is this deficit, as we look forward, doesn't improve in the future. As we extrapolate out, we see more holes of the 20, 25, 30 million as we go forward. It's not a pretty picture when we look at our finances. But what really needs to be understood here, and I'm sure all of you can understand that, is the total budget for the city of Stockton is over 521 million. It's a large budget. But of that, only 155 million, that part of the general fund, is the fund that's in crisis. That's the fund we're talking about when we talk about this fiscal crisis. 366 million of that large uh, budget are in restricted funds. In other words, that's the money that comes in from water and sewer and wastewater for transportation projects, grant funding, all those other dollars that through the federal government, the state government, Measure K, um, the, the municipal utilities department bills to you for water, sewer, that's restricted, it can only be used for those uses. So the general fund that's struggling cannot grab money out of those funds. We cannot snatch it and move it over into the general fund. Past councils did that and they were sued and they lost. It is legitimately kept in those enterprise specialized restricted funds. So a lot, all, a lot of this construction work that's going on that you're seeing will continue to go on because again, those are restricted funds. So what about in general? We have cut our budget, that general fund budget, 90 million in the last three years. And people will say, well, why don't you just pass you know, sales tax? The fact is we cannot tax our way out of this. There will, you would never want to pay the amount of taxes we would need to get out of this hole we're in right now. What really we need to do is change the way we run the city. We need to change the structure of how we do things and that's what we're looking at. We know that a band-aid approach will no longer work. We have to do radical surgery to cure this patient in that general fund. Now, the general fund, as many of you know, supports the most visible services in our community, the public safety, police, fire, libraries, community centers, the things that you depend upon the most. That's why we're so concerned about the state of our finances right now. Top, on top of all that, the city must balance a budget by July 1st. That is our requirement by the Charter, by the State of California. We have to balance a budget. We, unlike the federal government, 
can't run on deficits, we can't print money, we have to balance our budget, which means we have to do like you do every day of the year. Live within our revenue, live within our means, figure out how we're going to pay our bills, how we're going to bring in more revenue. Well, we have to balance this budget by July 31st, or thir July 1st, and we have, you know, we're up against a wall right now in terms of what we do. We have three options, three options that have been reported, but it's important that you know what those options are. One, we could do additional cuts. We could make more cuts to city staff, to police, to fire, to everybody. We don't want to do that. That is not where we want to go. We feel we've cut plenty. We've cut enough. We have to maintain the safety of the public. So additional cuts would be absolutely, and as far as I'm concerned, off the table in terms of those public safety officials. We have the other alternative, other than additional cuts this year, and many of you know we've cut, you know, many police uh, officers from our, from our police department over the last three years, and we've cut the fire department. The second option that we have would be do, to do a successful financial restructure. And that's what we're involved in right now through the AB 506 mediation process. We are involved in confidential mediation uh, meetings with our creditors, whether they be unions or bondholders, anybody we owe money to as we look forward. We're talking to them with the help of a, of a neutral mediator to figure out if they will come to a settlement outside of bankruptcy that will get us a solid financial footing as we go forward. This is a new law we're following. AB 506 was just passed last year. We're one of two cities in California that is in the middle of this process. Mammoth Lakes is the other one. They're too struggling with their finances. So we're in the middle of this AB 506 process. And we are hopeful that we can come to a settlement that will in fact get us a solid future. It really depends upon the players at the table. I can't predict, we have no idea, but we're de devoting time and energy and resources and money to make sure that this process succeeds. Mediation is truly our last and best chance to avoid bankruptcy, and we do not want to go into bankruptcy. We're avoiding that is our goal. We'll do everything we can to avoid bankruptcy. In the meantime, put aside all this gloom, we're still very much in the business mode. We have aggressive plans in the city. In the Community Development Department, we're re-engineering the department to be more business friendly, more customer friendly, so that when folks like you come in, the Community Development Department will solve your problems, help you find solutions, help you get back on the road to do what you need to do to make money. And businesses are locating here. Every month I sign letters welcoming new businesses, most of them small business, to our community. Over a hundred every month are taking out business licenses and, and locating here. That's really good news for us. We also right now have the Delta Water Supply Project that is, that is going to bring a reliable source of water to our community that's going to allow us to stop tapping the groundwater, that's going to provide for our growth in the future. That's a $200 million public works project, the largest in the history of Stockton, and we are going to be dedicating it later this month. Many communities would be envious of the water that we have and the supplies that we have. Speaking of water, we have formed a coalition to fight the state, the federal government, in their attempts to take Delta water out of the Delta and send it through a canal to the Southlands. We are not going to allow that to happen. We believe it's critical that we save the Delta, the water there, the ecosystem there, the businesses in this community that rely upon our Delta waters. We, it's called the Delta Coalition. The county, the city, all the public agencies are part of this, working to prevent a true economic disaster from happening should 
a peripheral canal, should a, a tunnel, should something called a conveyance take water around our delta instead of through our delta. And I'm proud to be leading that charge along with many others in our county. Other good news. The Arch Sperry Road and French Camp I-5 interchanges are beginning to be constructed. That's a huge infrastructure project that's going to connect 99 Highway with Interstate 5 and going to really open up South Stockton for economic development. It's been long in coming, a lot of planning, many years, but that is happening. Other excellent news is the state of California is building their prison medical facility out on Arch Road. They are pumping almost a billion dollars into our area's economy. They have to have local hire. 50% of their folks have to be hired locally. They have local procurement. But the best part is when they open next year in, in the summer, not this year, but in 2013, they will be hiring 2,400 employees. We're trying to get our, our local folks ready to take those local jobs. And you just heard from, commission, from Commissioner Blanchard about the Marine Highway. We're sitting in the economic engine of this community and that Marine Highway is going to put us on the map for internationally for our Valley's products. And we are the only port on the West Coast that is exporting more than it's importing. That's a great thing to know, isn't that? That is so terrific. I talk about the port all the time. So you see, we have a future. We have things going on out there that are bubbling and moving and going. Now, the other serious issue in our community is crime. And we have had an increase in violent crime. We know it's on the rise. Most of it is a result of lifestyle choices, of people being involved in gangs or drugs or prostitution, those kinds of things. But our level of crime is unacceptable. We have to stop this, and we are stopping this. And when you have this kind of high level of crime, you need a high level of commitment. And we are committed to cracking down on the criminals that terrorize our people. So what are we doing? Most importantly, we, the police department, the city, is developing partnerships with all our law enforcement partners in the county, the state, the federal government. We're using every resource out there that we can to address this very serious issue. And I'll just name a few in case you haven't read the papers lately to see the various activities that we're engaged in. The U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force has been working with the police department for a number of months, and they have a top 10 list of the top worst criminals in this city. Well, I'm happy to announce they've arrested 13 of those top 10. <laughs> they keep adding people to the list, remember? Is that good? The list in our community is a long list, so they, they can keep working for a long time moving people up to that top 10, and my hope is they stay here a long time working with our police department. We received a COPS grant, a community-oriented policing grant of $8 million just last fall to hire 17 more police officers in our city. We currently are hiring. We've got 20 vacancies. Our new chief, Eric Jones, has been on the job for several months now and is doing a dynamite job of really focusing on what needs to happen in our neighborhoods. He's saying... <laughs> He is saying he's hopeful we'll have 50 new police officers on the street by July, August, possibly September. So in the summer months, you're going to see, because there's, there's officers in training right now that are going to hit the streets and help, you know, reduce the level of violence in our community. We also have a firearms consortium that's being developed in the county to get guns off the street. That's really important because it's guns and gangs that are causing our problems. 
We have a countywide gang task force that was just developed with the county. And that's going to be huge in terms of looking at overall in our county how we can address that issue of guns and gangs. So again, our partners, the sheriff, probation, parole, the marshal, uh, the FBI, uh, the state highway patrol, all of these folks are partners with us. That's what we really need right now when we're in crisis situation. We need partners to help solve this community-wide, county-wide problem. And they have stepped up. And so I'm very pleased with, with the leadership of the police department and the, the response of all the law enforcement in our county and the, and the state and the federal government, by the way. Now, Chief Jones the other night at our council meeting announced a new initiative. We actually are funding what we call community response teams where there's specialized officers working specialized areas in our city, those hot spots where we know most of the crime occurs. The, the chief is doing real-time policing where they really look at where the crime is occurring, <coughs> what kinds of crimes, and how they can address that on the spot. Last weekend, we had an example of the collaboration and partnership that exists among all the partners I mentioned. We had a crime crackdown in the city for one weekend. We had 125 law enforcement officials in our community picking up the worst of the worst, being right there, arresting people, stopping people, doing what we need to have done on a more regular basis, frankly. That Partnership involved, again, the Stockton PD, the California Highway Patrol, the Sheriff's Department, probation, parole, the police departments from Lodi, Tracy, Manteca stepped up as well. That's an excellent sign. <laughs> we had FBI agents. We had AFT agents, we had US Marshals, we had all the resources, the big guns of law enforcement. They were here in our community, and many of them will continue to be here. What were the results of that crime crackdown last weekend? We had 101 arrests, 87 probation and parole searches, 17 firearms were confiscated, and there were 685 traffic stops. Now you think traffic stops, but let me tell you, traffic stops are the first line of defense in a community because those traffic stops can yield the visible guns, visible drugs, they can, they can be checked for parole, for probation. The Highway Patrol is outstanding in leadership and making a lot of those traffic stops. They are a real partner. We asked them last fall if they could help us, and they have responded in spades. So special thanks to them as well. Now, we're also working with the Marshall Plan Steering Committee. We've got all the partners again coming together to meet to look at a long-range, comprehensive plan to address crime in our community. And they're going to look at what works and what doesn't work based upon best practices and what they learn from other communities. We've had one meeting. We're meeting again tomorrow. It's an outstanding group who are on point when it comes to looking at solving this crime situation that, frankly, as you know, has existed for a long time in our community. Our community partners are stepping up to help us in, in reducing crime and preventing it. The Downtown Alliance is going to be funding bike patrols in the downtown again. Yay for the Alliance. That is terrific. The Miracle Mile Improvement District is putting more money towards security in the Mile area, along with the University of the Pacific, who is an outstanding partner in recognizing their role in making our community safe. Neighborhood watches are being formed right and left throughout the city because neighbors, Stocktonians all, stepping up and saying, what can we do? How can we make our city safer? They're stepping up, forming neighborhood watches, getting to know the people who live in the neighborhood. And they're becoming the eyes and ears of the police department. They're now able to text tip 
things that they see. They can do online reporting. And we're developing this partnership with our community that's so essential for overall public safety. So we all are working very hard. We're taking back our streets and our neighborhoods. And we're working with our law enforcement partners. And we're going to, we're going to fix this situation. There's no doubt. The City Council and I will not compromise the safety of our citizens or put our citizens at risk. That's why we're so concerned about our budget issues and how we work through them so that we make sure we have the public safety officials out in the community to protect businesses and property and persons alike. Our city's future really depends upon the safety of our citizens and it's the yardstick by which our community is judged and we will not fail you. We will make sure that we turn this situation around. Again, we're grateful. We're so grateful for the partnerships that have stepped up to help us in this situation. This is a time of scarce resources for all agencies, public and private. And to have people come to the table and offer what they can and make good on it is an indication of the level of, of importance that they give to this and how they are focused and committed and in this community for good. And you all, of course, have done your share as well. The mere fact that you're here, staying in business, working hard, promoting Stockton, and keeping the home fires burning is important because we're all going to come out of this, but we need everyone to be together in that process. So in conclusion, this has been a difficult year for all of us with tough decisions. The City Council has made extremely tough decisions. And we're going to see even tougher decisions ahead of us. The fixes to our financial issues will not be pretty. But we're determined to come out of this with the city on a solid financial foundation that will move Stockton forward. That's what we're about, is moving Stockton forward, keeping our eye on the ball out there. But we have to make some tough decisions between now and the ball to make sure that we actually have that solid foundation that we so desperately needed. Now, you all know we inherited a mess. We truly inherited a mess when we were elected to the city council. But we're not whining, you know, because the council and I are problem solvers. We intend to fix the problems that are dragging the city down. We really are your fixers. We're going to fix it. It's going to be long and probably painful, but we will fix it. Whenever we've been given complete and accurate information, we've made the difficult and courageous decisions needed to get our city back on track. Unlike the federal government and unlike the state government, we do have a plan to move our city forward. And we're going to solve those problems that threaten to sink us. So keep the faith. It's important that we all do our jobs well, extra well, as we go through these tough times. We may be ground zero, it seems like, in economic terms. We may be fighting a battle with the criminals in our community. We may be facing greater challenges in the months to come. And I predict we will face them. But like the mythical, mythical phoenix, we will rise from the ashes to soar once again and again. Stockton will and will be always a great city. And it's because of people like you who are invested in this community. So when all of this is said and done, I hope next year I'll be here to give you even better news about how, where we are and what we're doing. When we come out of this, ladies and gentlemen, we will be stronger, we will be smarter, we will survive. We are Stockton. Thank you.